What's up, everybody? I'm on this channel now, I guess. I have no idea what I brought myself into, but hi, my name is High Voltage. Hi, shake my hand, sign this contract. You're now part of my network, hi. And that, kids, is how you sign a contract that you did not want to sign. Um, oh, you're saying you, didn't, you don't want to join my network? Fine, I'll, I'll, I had an actual proposal ready to go, but I guess you don't want to. Uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. What's up, everyone? I'm High Voltage. I'm Pat. Pat to the... The many of... There are some who call me Pat. Uh, anyway, um, this is Laura's show where Laura isn't here because I'm taking over for it because uh, this needs to go on this show. This is Pokemon Channel. Uh, you can watch the previous episodes uh, hosted by Laura. Uh, Sacred Ash, or gosh, she has a million names now. Um, and it's about the anime or movies and stuff like that. Um, ba basically, any... Pat is now Laura and I am now Pat. Yep. Because he's going to talk and talk and talk. And I won't shut up. And I'm just going to be here reminiscing about the first time I heard this. So we're going to talk about Generation 4 of the anime and Ash. Yep. And the, basically, here's what you need to know, okay? They made Ash good. They made Ash real good. Gen and then 4 they had to fuck Ash, Ash because yeah. of continuity. Well, basically... I I don't the vote whole it on anime, the whole anime, the whole Ash saga, could have, and should have ended, at Gen Four, and they should have started with a new character because they had a perfect ending. I will actually lead on into a little bit of Sixth Generation because I sometimes come back, but I absolutely refuse to watch the show until I actually learn that Ash has beaten something. Because at this point in time, being a longtime viewer of the show since the first season, and keeping up with it till pretty recent, I refuse to get invested into it yep. until Ash finally beats something because of fourth gen, actually. Because in fourth gen, it is very much, I very much will stick firm to this that Ash should have won fourth gen. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So in the beginning, you look at uh, Gen One. You're waking up. You see I'm at, Pokemon. I'm at beginning a beginning of Gen Four. Let's. Yep. Yep. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go quickly over Gen One and Two and Three as a very yeah, quick. I don't really remember how Three ended. Yep, I do know how Three ended. Um, but Gen One, Gen Two, and Gen Three all kind of acted the same way. Ash doesn't know what Pokemon really is. He's getting started. He's got his asshole of a rival, Gary, and all that. And everything's fine and dandy with that whole story plot. Now, we follow him for 80 episodes for him to lose. Now, on a normal circumstances, on any other anime, that would be an immediate red flag of fuck this anime. Me, however, I thought, well, you know, this is like literally his first run. And if anyone's ever done a video game ever, you know that it doesn't always go pleasant. The exactly. first time. And uh, I'm just going to jump in here and say the moral of it was, other than, you know, capitalizing on that shit, but, the, you know, Gen 1, ha Gen 1 of the anime was really nice because it was it was a 90s anime, so it had an overarching thing going on. And the thing was is that Ash is 10. Let, let's all accept that. He's a bit of an idiot. Forever. And it's okay to lose. Yep. Because it leads lose. to new journeys and it leads to new and areas leads to and it leads buying to the next game as well. Yep, and it leads to you losing all your money to Nintendo. Now, okay, so now let's go to Gen 2 and the Orange Islands. Gen 2 is Ash. The best thing in Gen 2 was Ash finally got to rub it in Gary's face that he won. However, Ash lost one pretty as in. much right after Wait, he beat So he Gary. won as in? Yeah, he beats Gary in the uh, Pokemon League. Like he, they straight up fight. They find they didn't get to fight. Is this in at the Gen be, in, is at the so this at the end of Gen two? Yep, at the end of Gen two. Because in Gen one they didn't get to fight. Gary lost before Ash could even fight him. Right. But in Gen two, Ash and Gary have. I think it might even be a two part episode. Because I think if I were to lead it up to a top ten best battle playlist, it would be up there. But Ash fought Gary, and I think it was either a three on three or a six on six. It was one of the two. But. Uh, Ash won, so that was the benefit of that. But now, at this point, we're like, hey, so Ash. Who, who knocked Ash out of the tournaments in the first and second generation? Oh, God. Oh, the first one, it was Archie on uh, terms of bullshit. Uh, Archie's that, 
Was other Archie Ash. Huh? Other other Ash. He's the one know. with the Pikachu named uh, Sparky and the... Oh, that douchebag! Yeah, and the reason he lost was because Charizard wouldn't listen. And they had to forfeit the match because Charizard just wouldn't battle. So because of Charizard's fucking attitude problem, Ash lost. Like, that okay. that's how Gen so 1 ended. Generation and that, 2. Generation 2, I think he just met a rival that just toppled him. I don't I don't remember exactly Gen 2 on that one because Gen 2 wasn't necessarily one of my favorites. But then we go to the Orange Islands. No, we did the Orange Islands after Gen 1. Oh. Huh. Well, that he, led wins, up to... he wins a shitty tournament there. Yes, he does win that one. And Only then one was... he ever won. No, he he beat the uh, Battle Frontier. Oh, really? Yep, and is offered to be a Frontier Brain and uh, denies it because he doesn't want to be a Frontier Brain because he wants to continue being a Pokemon See, Master. That's, that's how you know that shit is... That's when you know that you can't take the anime seriously is when he can't beat the Kanto League where Pokemon use Rock Throw as one of their main moves. Yet one of the Frontier Brains, yeah, the last beat... Frontier Brain that he fought uses Reggie Steel, Reggie Rock, and Reggie Ice. Jesus fucking Christ. Actually, one of the f the first Frontier Brain, the battle is Articuno versus Charizard. Oh, no. Yeah, like, just okay, let so, that sink so in. Let, so he gets knocked out of Gen 2. So then we yep. go, at the end Gen of Gen 2, we get to see a Blaziken, and everyone's like, what the fuck is that? Oh, thing? That's, who that's who we lost to. He lost to him with Cacleon and Blaziken, and he was like, what is that? Which led to Gen 3. Gen 3... Pretty bad because there really was no rival in Gen 3. But, but the there way were rivals each... for the contest characters. Yes. Oh, and man, coordinator like, is so good. The, the, um, well, there's rivals for May, but. So many rivals for May. There's so many rivals Jessie. for May. There's even more with Dawn. That's why Gen 4 was. Jesse gets her own rivals. Yep. And Ash fought, uh, Morrison, who. At the time, was like my Beldum's gonna win the entire thing, and it's like, how the fuck did you get to the league? <laughs> and um, you look at it all as okay. So there's a guy named Tyson with a meowth with that wears cowboy boots and is adorable, but has a rough, tough past, and he actually wins the whole thing. But Ash literally meets them there. Gen 3 was all right because Ash is somewhat teaching May what to do. And unlike Misty, who just nagged him, May's like, you know what? I need to actually learn from Ash. You because know, I'll this learn is when from they, Okay, so I'm going to tackle this because I remember – the only things I remember vividly are the first episodes of Generation 3 and Generation 4, which the first episodes were – like this is when they were like, okay, Ash is old hat. Our main characters are the girls. The girls are the main characters. Which mm -hmm. is really, really good. Because they both have a similar intro to the series. In Generation 3, doesn't it start with the Taylor thing? Um, how, lately, how, how lately every Ash's Taylor thing? thing, when there's new new characters other than Brock and Misty, it leads up to something happened with Pikachu, where if you want me to explain why no, no, no. Pikachu sucks In everything. what episode was it the thing where she gave a Taylo a piece of chocolate and then all the Taylors attacked her or something? Uh, it's either Gen or it's either no, it's, it's in Gen three. It's May. No, I know, but it's either in episode one, two, or three. Yeah, it's really. He really always on. he always gets a flying type right off the bat, and it's know, always like, because Pikachu. It's, it's, it's telling a story purely from May's perspective, and she gets attacked by a bunch of Pokemon, and yep. she has a bit of a holy shit! I need to protect myself by getting a Torchic and being badass. Mm -hmm. Generation four starts with fucking just she's gonna get killed by bugs bugs are going to kill dawn and she has piplup use bide and it fucking makes a nuke now i will say this dawn as a character i portrayally did not like but it in that sense she of how well so that story long of a she had so much that was just about her i i will say this dawn as a character i didn't like how the whole show and story portrayed she fit perfectly. Exactly. And that goes into my analysis of the generations that I'll show you later. So continue with Gen 3. So we're starting Gen 3. 
So Gen 3, we go through it. It's more or less about teaching May what Pokemon is. And, and it's contests. Kind of show- it's kind of showing the viewers that, you know, Ash has learned from the past two generations. But here's the thing with Ash learning from the past two generations and why He's Gen 3 how was... to lose. Well, the starting of Gen 3 and where I noticed that Ash is taking a different route, he didn't have all three starters. Nope. He just had Trico, which was hilarious because he looked oh, at it and he said, this so must be a... He looked, did, I don't know if you knew this. He looked at Trico and said, this must be a fire type. And the look Trico gave on him was, motherfucker, do I look like a fire type? <laughs> I have a fucking twig in my mouth. Oh, my God. It was great. It oh, um, was so good. It was, uh, it was good. But then you go to Gen 4. Ashes wait, Pikachu. Wait, 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 wait. You got to gotta do the tournament. Mm. Yeah. Um, and contest tournament. And then Battle Frontier. Well, May loses the tournament but actually what you find out later on in generations is that may not only wins every other contest other than that she has now gotten the title the hoenn princess and when i saw that that was an amazing thing yep because then may she gets showed, a- not may because may was there she was a fucking princess and then fucking misty shows up in her fucking golding outfit mm-hmm oh so beautiful as like the the dress give i don't give a fuck about the girls Yep, just the dresses. Were so and then, um, and then, I actually have to go to this because the reason I had to go to those three is because after they do Gen three, they go back to Kanto for a little bit to do the Battle Frontiers. The Battle Frontiers is actually in Kanto. Weird. Yep, but I have to do that because Ash brings something from the Battle Front or the Kanto thing to Gen four, and it actually plays a huge he part in Gen four. Yep, that's where he gets right. a palm. But May also gets a Bulbasaur, an Eevee, and a Squirtle, all in Kanto. So he just fucking wrecks house there. Oh my god, he just, it was one of the best things ever. It's where Sceptile evolved. It's oh, where, so good. It's where um, Dawn Fan finally evolved. Um, and Sceptile actually couldn't use any of his moves because he wasn't used to his new body. Oh yeah, that's a big change. Yeah, and it was great how they portrayed that. They're like, this is Ash dealing with how do you deal with a Pokemon? Was it Bolt Tackle Gen 3 as well? Um, Bolt Tackle was introduced in Gen 3, I know. Bolt Tackle was introduced the in ball. the Battle Frontier. Okay. It was right at the end of the Battle Frontier. and That's it, why he was practicing in Gen 4. Yes. Now that's, anime, now that's basic and, anime progression. Yep, and actually he uh, fully forgot it now. Um, oh, god damn it. Yep, he yeah, now he has a spin attack. Ball. Well, no, he did Electro Ball, which I don't know why. Um, but Gen... Was actually nice. so, Gen so, 4. Uh, so, so he gets just generally kind of panned for the tournament in Gen 3. Yep. Okay, and then. he gets beat, and it's it's rough on him, but... Then he, <laughs> then he goes Gen, on vacation. Fucking, okay, Gen 4, Gen 4, Gen 4. Gen 4. He comes to this island with Apom and Pikachu. And then it pans over to Dawn, who is like, hey, I'm this girl who wants to be a contest. I already know what I want to do. I want to be like my mom. And then she goes over and shit goes down in the lab where the starters break out. And Piplup's the only one who's going to help her. And yep. Piplup wasn't going to be her first choice, but became her first choice. Basis on the fact that he was like, no, nah, had never looked. Gen 4 was a generation of let's take every shitty move and make it look amazing. Let's make mm-hmm. Whirlpool look beautiful. They made Whirlpool one of the worst moves in Pokemon look incredible. But and Bide just like nukes, just it saves her life. But I, I could honestly tell people right off the bat one thing that would make everyone immediately watch it, and that's. Ash catches a dragon type in that gem. There you go. Just watch that series now. You can just thank me for that later. However, there's another character introduced right off the bat. And I'm like, who is this? They had, His name they had is me- Paul. They hadn't messed with the Pokedex since Gen 1 in terms of checking Pokemon stats. In Gen yeah, 1, no. there was a fucking asshole who was like breaking the fourth wall of like, oh, I learned this at level 21. And then there's this guy who doesn't mention levels, so it's still canon. But he's like, this Taylor, not Taylor, this Starly has fucking this move. This one has that move too, but this one has this move. So actually, throw out these and then get this one. Actually, something incredible. If you actually go and buy the Pokedex toy, it comes with that. 
I have all the Pokedexes. It actually comes with that little black device that pops out and scans your Pokeball. Nice. Like, I thought that was the cool, most creative thing ever because every time I, I see Ash catch something, he automatically knows what the fuck this thing does. And it's like, how do you know this already? You haven't inspected anything. You haven't sat it down and had a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, hey, so, like, you're new to the team. Um, What the fuck do you do? There's none of that. But now that Paul pulls out this scanner that scans the Pokeball and tells them what it does and what its abilities are, that makes sense. Thanks for solving that riddle. I mean, it wasn't a riddle that, like, And he just, like, me. he just so fucking, he just, like, he is the competitive more than anything else. Paul like, Paul was oh, the best rival. Gary's an asshole. He fucking and everyone, throws away Pokemon. Gary Gary's an asshole. And I'll I'll get to Paul. I want to explain Paul on the best sense because I want everyone to hate this fucker until the end, and then I want you to love him on who he is. Paul literally is opposite Ash. Now Gary's not opposite Ash. Gary's just nan 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 nan. Gary's like older brother Ash. He's just an asshole who wants to prove to his little brother that he's better than him. So that's a counter that's a victory on that. The Gen 3 rivals, it's some fat sumo dude and some weird Texas guy that came out of nowhere. There's no build there's no build up on any of them. Now Gen 4, Paul is introduced Wanting to fight Ash because Ash plays so high in the tournament. Now, Paul has never been in anything at this point. Paul's Pokemon at this point is a Starly, a Chimchar, and Elekid. Now, Ash gets Pikachu back eventually. And Ash also um, catches a Starly. But he also brought Apom. Now, you look at the team. You have Bird versus Bird, which are the same bird. Monkey versus Monkey, which is the same thing. Elekid versus Pikachu. Elekid. Pretty much opposite rivals. You have the exact match. And it ends in a draw. And Paul is like, how did the play 16 actually get this far? Like, I don't understand it. Now, Pokemon Paul has thrown away. And yes, audience, I'm actually saying thrown away. Literally. He has thrown two Starlies away. And... He has also thrown a Stanler away, and he gave away an Asmeral. He gave away his Asmeral in the gym battle because it couldn't beat a rock type. And he thought, why do I have this thing if it can't even beat a rock type? It's a water type. Get off my team. He caught a Stanler, scanned it, and was like, oh god, this thing's weak, and threw it away. He threw his Starly away, both of them, because the one wasn't good enough. Caught a better one, and then the better one lost to Ash's Starly, and he was like, gross, and let it go. IVs. It's it based all on IVs. So Paul has done that multiple times, and then there's one other Pokemon he throws away. Oh, you done get... fucked up. Now, Paul's Chimchar. Paul has this Chimchar because Chimchar has a hidden ability. It's Blaze. not Blaze. It's not Blaze. I'm not calling that Blaze. I'm going to call that Super Sand God Mode because that's exactly what it is. Chimchar, in a pinch, does not activate Blaze. Because you see in the game, or in the show, Overgrow and Torrent. And they activate pretty cool, but Chimchar's Blaze is not Blaze. Chimchar's Blaze is his tail ignites to... Moltres's wing level. This is a teeny monkey with one of Moltres's wings of fire coming out of his ass at this point. Based on power, he flame wheeled and annihilated seven Zangooses because he was cornered. Paul wanted that power. Paul, Paul though, does not do what Ash does. Ash trains his Pokemon based on skill, friendship, love, trust, and building a bond with them. The three things he picked up. The, hold up. List those again. Uh, bonds, training, love, trust, and understanding. Okay. So, uh, training, got from Gen 1. Yep. All the lovey-dovey shit from Gen 2. Yep. And all the adventurous shit from Gen 3. Yep. And Ash actually gets a really good team on this one. Oh. Now, Paul, the way Paul does this, here's how he trains Chimchar. He sends Chimchar out. 
Here is Paul's other team. Ellicott at this point. Murkrow, Weavile, Ursaring, and a Torterra. Wait, how many episodes in? It It's roughly around when Ash is going with the Heart Home Tournament. I think it's either after the fourth gym battle or... Okay, okay, good. Got it. Or possibly the anime doesn't before... give a shit about fucking levels. No, not at all. And Paul's had this Torterra since he was before 10. So, or Turtwig before 10. And Paul's um, older brother, uh, Archie, actually Another has... fucking Archie. I think his name's Archie. Otherwise, if it's not, it's Reggie or Riley. One of the two. I think it's Reggie, actually. Riley, it couldn't be Riley. Riley is the... Is the or an Lucario guy. guy. Yeah. Um, but his brother actually beat all the leagues. Ironically, though, his brother did not beat the final frontier brain. He couldn't do it and gave up on it when Brandon said, you, this doesn't suit you. And he looked back on it and realized, you know what? I actually want to be a breeder. I don't want to do this, but he beat all the leagues. And Paul saw that as his brother giving up and being weak. And Paul said, I'm never doing that. Breeders for life. Now, Paul launches Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, Leaf Storm, Ice Beam, and uh, Thunderbolt. Or, not Thunderbolt. Is it Thunderbolt? No, no, what's the other one? Yeah, it's Thunderbolt. Okay. Ellie Kid's Thunderbolt. Um to Chimchar, and he tells Chimchar to take it because he wants Chimchar to tap into that willingly by beating the shit out of him. Eventually, Ash and his team... The other thing is, Paul doesn't treat his Pokemon right. He looks at Chimchar and says, you're worthless. You are going to amount to nothing, Chimchar. Why the hell do I even have you on my team? And when Chimchar does good, he goes, what are you cheering about? You should have done that better the first time. And Chimchar, like, he's giving this thing PTSD and depression at the same time. Like, garbage. He treats this thing like garbage. And he abuses it to a point where Ash, Brock, and Dawn actually take Chimchar to the Pokemon Center. And he almost dies. And Nurse Joy actually threatens to take away Paul's license and his Pokedex. If he doesn't let Chimchar heal for at least one more night. Because at that point it's Pokemon abuse. That's how serious this gets with Chimchar. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way. Uh, I just want to come in here and say. Uh, during this segment. Because you mentioned you know breeders and stuff. And uh, yep. all of that. We have a podcast uh, that we did. Me and Swift called The Versus Seeker. Where we talk about the sociocultural implications. Of trainer classes in the games. And we overanalyzed that, and I think you would really love the episode. Oh, I will definitely. I saw that. I loved. Oh, you did. Okay, we will definitely. Want, I would definitely want to do a uh, a versus seeker with you about treating Pokemon. Yeah, because I I'm not gonna lie. Everyone knows the term HM whore, and everyone knows the term switch bait, which. On some viewpoints, I'm. How does I'm that with. translate into a role play world? Yes. Yeah. So we can continue. Um. So Paul um treats Chimchar to this point. Now, here's the thing: after Ash lose or Ash and Paul have the draw, Ash repeatedly loses to Paul. Repeatedly. Here's the other thing, though. Paul actually challenged Cynthia at one point, the champion and one of the best champions. I might add, she is like the best for a champion. I love her whole outlook, I love her style of battling, and I love how none of her Pokemon makes sense. Like, a Garchomp, a Gastrodon, a Togekiss, a Lucar nothing is solid type. She's covering her, covering her bases. She's the first to do that. Uh, Blue... Blue could do that, but you've kind of... In Generation knew. 1, you... you well... Yeah. There was no hint at what Blue could do. Or there, what that blue is going to switch it up. Blue was blue. You've seen the True. entire. Okay, yeah, I get. I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And you then expect her to be like a, a dragon trainer, something like that. Because like at that the last point, one. Well, because Lance was a dragon trainer, Wallace was a water type, and Steven was a steel, steel type. Clearly, we're following a pattern. Or other, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I like it how he says he's steel, yet he only has three. Well, and it's re- not that it's steel, it's that it's fossils and rocks and minerals. But he likes to go on as steel. Like, if you look, because, if you were to look them because, up, it says thing, steel. I want to go back to Gen 3 just for a second and say, Generation 2 was like, oh, yeah, we have two new types. They're to balance out psychic. But then they're, they only introduce a few of them. That's like, okay. You know, it's like, oh, here's a gym leader. She's training a new type, but we don't even know what it really is. And she has a Steelix and a Magnemite. You're like, where was the new type? It's like almost explicit. It's almost not even explicitly stated that there is steel type. Then you fight Karen and you're like, wow, these dark types really suck. And Actually, then gotta... I want to I point something out. Have you ever noticed that there is no dark gym leader? Yep, no dark type gym leaders. Nope, there's a fairy type though. <laughs> so, and then you go to Gen 3 and they're just like, yeah, uh, what the fuck were you doing, Gen 2? We're going to take your thing and make it ours. And then Pretty we much. have a million cool steel types, a million cool dark types. So, like, Steven was just like, this is steel type done right. Shut the fuck up, Jasmine. You know what's hilarious? You know how he said he's stealing rock? Yep. Clay Doll is neither of them. <laughs> yeah. He he is he wanted steel type whatever we'll give it to him. Um, Cynthia though was so cover everything, and then Alder kind of followed up with that. But then Black and White two led up to Iris being dragon, even though half it's the same thing as Steven. Three of her types are dragons; the rest are not. But back to Gen four, Paul actually challenges Cynthia. It actually says, throw out your guard chomp, and I'm going to send out my Chimchar on you. And C- Cynthia said, no, you could actually fight me with all six. And Paul gets his ass kicked. But Paul is actually more mad at Chimchar than any of his other Pokemon because he's like, "Why did you could have stopped this. And Chimchar feels bad. Now, Ash has been learning in this. He's actually been like the fifth gym leader. She puts my Pokemon to sleep. How do I beat this? Got it. I'm going to make something called the Counter Shield. I'm going to make my Pokemon use an element that spins to make a barrier to block the wave of hypnosis. Which goes just along with contests, which do the same mythology, which he learns from. He learns that contests show you how you can use moves yep. to be completely he learned it. different. He learned it from Dawn. Who now, subsequently probably got something from a, I don't know, buffer generation. Yep. And this generation now It's just innovation out the ass. Yep. At this point we'll go back to before um before uh or we'll go after fourth gen. Now at this point in time, Ash for a team has a Pikachu. I want to say he had a palm, he had a Star Ravia at this point. He also had a uh Oh god, what else did Ash have? Um I don't think he had No, he didn't. He had a uh, Turtwig, Star Ravia, and Pikachu and a Palm. Okay. So he has four Pokémon. Yep. Now Paul and Ash enter a tournament together not willingly mind you are you talking about paul the end of the hated show? nope this is the hard home tournament to win a soothe right. bell okay. and paul wanted to enter it just to get levels that's all paul wanted he was he threw his bell away actually because ash and paul won it but during the middle of the fight um it was turtwig and chimchar and turtwig was down and in chimchar's way and paul actually said chimchar burn turtwig Blow him out of your way so you can win this. And Chimchar wouldn't do it because he didn't want to hurt Turtwig. Because Ash has always said, you know, hey, buddy, don't listen to him. You're 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 a good Pokemon. Turtwig, or er, he refused to hit Turtwig. And at one point, looked for Paul for the next move because they kind of they kind of recover from it. They're also facing like a Rhydon and a Magmar. And he's looking at it. He's like, come on, do this, Chimchar. And he's Chimchar wouldn't do it. And then Paul turns away from Chimchar. This is Paul giving up on Chimchar. 
all the work, Paul has looked at Chimchar and said, all right, you know what? I've had it. I've had it. You're just the biggest disappointment. And at the end of that battle that somehow Ash miraculously pulls out of his ass because at this point, Ash is good. He's Paul smart. throws away Chimchar. He releases him. He fucking, like, doesn't he crack the ball or something? No, he he releases Chimchar, and Chimchar's like, wait, I've been released? And then Paul throws the Pokeball in the trash. Wait, what? I thought he snapped a Pokeball at some point. No, no, I don't think does he, he ever? did that. No, I don't think he I does. seem to remember that there was it was a forest setting. There were trees and everything. He sends out Chimchar... And then he just fucking snaps it and walks away. And Ash is just there like, what the fuck? That's what I remember. I think that, that may have happened. I'm, I haven't watched yeah. it in such a long time. I, but I, I remember. remember a Pokeball being destroyed. So he takes the Pokeball. and Oh, he might have thrown it on the ground and stomped on it. You might be right. I, I, imagine, I remember him like opening it up and opening it beyond the point that it opens and then snapping it in half. But, I mean, he could have stepped on it. But Chimchar starts bawling because now he's out alone. And Ash looks at that and says, you know what? Fuck him. Chimchar, come with me. And Chimchar hugs Ash as if it's an orphan finding a family finally. Except the family's been there since the fucking beginning. Yep. And now Paul at this point has an Electro Buzz. Paul also replaced Chimchar with a Magmar. A fucking soulless Pokemon. Oh, wait. Don't let Bushy hear me say that. (laughs) Bushy, I love Magmar. Don't kill me. It's okay. We can talk about Duck Butthead. Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hate mail. Anyways, Ash eventually evolves uh, Chimchar in Monferno and evolves uh, Turtwig into Grottle. And Turtwig has problems because Turtwig's actually a really fast Pokemon that Ash had, and Grottle's obviously oh, not. Oh yeah, because Chlorophyll's s- stupid. Yep, and Ash actually works with him to learn that. And before he evolves into Torterra, Ash actually taught his Grottle Rock Climb. But he actually taught him that. Also, Ash gets a Star Raptor. And Ash catches a Gligar. Oh, that fucking Gligar. Who sucks at flying. But Ash actually works with him and teaches him how to fly. Now, here is something that happened in this anime that baffled me. Dawn catches a Buizel at some point, and this is before the third gym. Bui. Bui, bui. Um, Buizel was a bad rogue that lived in the waterfall that beat up anyone that come near it, and everyone wanted it. And Dawn caught it. Dawn. Dawn caught it, but that's after Ash, Brock, an Elite Four member. Everyone else tries to catch this thing, and it just does not happen, and Dawn finally gets it because everyone's worn it out. Dawn basically Jack killed and took took the kill. Um, and she caught Buizel. She used it in contest, and Buizel learned to like Dawn. Now, at this point, Dawn's Pokemon are hmm. Oh man, I don't remember Dawn's Pokemon. Club? I know she never evolves Piplup. She oh, never evolves. Never? never. She gets a Baneri, and that never evolves either. Patricia. Uh, Pachirisu, and then, yeah, and then she catches Buizel. All a bunch of cute and, little bubbly blues. Except for Buizel. Um, <laughs> then there's just this odd, I don't give a damn, Pokemon who loves battling. Now, Ash's Apom loves Ash and loves to battle, but Apom loves to put on a show. Swift, motherfucker. Now, both of Dawn and Ash... Eventually, Dawn challenges the third gym leader to a battle, and Ash sees how much Buizel loves to fight, and Buizel wants a rematch eventually because he loses. Ash actually taught Buizel Water Pulse and taught him how to basically... He was basically Master Roshi teaching Goku the Kamehameha Wave. He taught Buizel how to control and maintain Water Pulse. But this wasn't his Pokemon at this time. At this time, eventually... Trade, motherfucker. Ash and Dawn look at each other and go, you know, Apom loves contests. Buizel loves gym battles. It's just a better trade. Ash brought a Pokemon from Kanto all the way over for Dawn to obtain. But Ash now has a Buizel that loves battling. Also, <laughs> this Buizel knows how to counteract 
ice beam by using aqua jet and turning the aqua jet into an ice torpedo. Oh, and at some point uh, while fighting Manetric or being on a ranch with Manetric, Pikachu learns how to be a badass with fucking. No, wait, no, it's not Pikachu Voltackle. with Voltackle. Yeah, but it's also Brave Bird. Oh yeah, Brave Bird. Brave Bird Ash- was intense. Yep, Ash taught Brave Bird to Star Raptor because he was using Aerial Ace for the longest who time. Was, who was that girl on the farm with the Manetric? Like that girl uh, taught everything. I mean, target I practice remember. and all that shit. There was some fucking breeder girl from Gen Four in the anime who had. A oh, farm. actually, actually, do you know who taught Ash's uh, Star Raptor Brave Bird? It was someone. It was Paul's brother. That's why he was at a breeder place. It was Paul's fucking brother. Yep, Reggie God, actually are the best taught... people ever. Reggie, Reggie's Pokemon. Oh my God. Um, Reggie's Pokemon is Bee Barrel, Swalot, Star Raptor, Drapion, and, and uh, he actually is and, the one who and, fought Electivire for or Elector Elect Kid for Paul. Elect Kid, yeah. Uh, I thought he had a. Oh, did his girlfriend have the Manetric? Or is he just breeding that one? I think his girlfriend had the. Was I remember raised. it was a girl. It was a girl. But now, through everything Ash has done at this point, he's been training, battling, Innovative. dealing with Chimchar's PTSD. Because there's times where when he evolves, he taps into Blaze out of nowhere and loses control and actually bites Ash and claws and beats the shit out of Ash. And Ash takes it and lets him know. Everything's going to be okay. I love you. Gen 2. Now, pretty much, this is where Ash is learning. Now, eventually, Ash gets a Torterra and an Infernape and a Gliscor. Okay, let's review Ash's team right here. Torterra, fully evolved starter, badass looking starter. Infernape. The orphan with the trouble pass is now fully evolved. Who can nuke Paul, the field? Who Paul couldn't evolve. Star Raptor, one of the toughest flying types in the game next to Talonflame. Bweasel, the badass from the waterfall, who at this point knows water pulse and all that and has learned to adapt from other people's moves and who uses them. Contest against. skills. Like contest, with contest driven skills. contest driven innovation. And now Gliscor, who has mastered flying due to Ash's training, knows Steel Wing, x or um, I don't remember the other one, but I do know that he did uh, learn Stone Edge. And then but Pikachu. eventually learns Giga Impact. Jesus now, fucking Christ. And a Pikachu with Volt Tackle and all these other moves. Now, Ash's team at this point... Yeah, these are is, all trained by a... Basically, a guy red. who we gave up on. No, he's trained. All, no, no, no. Ash and his Pokemon are trained by the breeder who won all of the league tournaments. Apparently, is what you said. Um, just Star Raptor. Just Star Raptor was trained. Oh, okay. I, I could have. Turwig, that. Turwig was given to him by pretty much the other Bulbasaur lady who like was raising Pokemon on a farm. Uh, Chimchar was an orphan trained by Paul. Buizel was trained by Dawn. Pikachu had something to do with the target practice and the magnet and the uh, fucking manetric. Yep, yep. Pikachu learned how to control his Volt Tackle better. Yeah, on the farm with the breeder girl. So Brave Bird and control Volt Tackle. Yep. That's what he learned from Reggie. Now, Ash challenges Paul to a six on six match after the seventh gym leader. Ash loses badly. Paul because loses. Paul has a fucking pseudo ledge well paul mm, does he have the tur nope paul does not have a pseudo legendary doesn't he eventually get a tyranitar nope um i thought he got a tyranitar at this point paul's pokemon are electrovire magmortar ursaring jesus christ um weavile uh honchcrow Oh Torterra, and I th- believe that was all, unless there was a Ninjask. However, That's fucking crazy. However, he uses Weavile, and I believe maybe his Honchkrow is there too. But those Pokemon lose because 
Paul is scouting out his team using switch bait. Sends in mag mortar, sends in electrofire, and send, actually, I think that's all he used. He just swept. Ash didn't even get to really see his team. They're 540 base stat Pokemon. Oh, he just wrecked Ash, and Ash took that loss harsh. Now, at this point, Ash has met. Now we're going to the league. Ash has met two trainers and two tutors. A guy who uses a Mr. Mime physically with Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Focus Punch, and Ice Punch. And Ash trains with Bweasel to learn Ice Punch. This is also one of the only generations where abilities actually mattered. Oh, yeah. You got to see Swift Swim. You got to see Guts. You got to see Chlorophyll. You got to see Blaze. Blaze. You got to see... Torrent. You got to see everything static, the whole works. What you did, got to what see did, uh, What did Staraptor have? Uh, I think he has intimidate? guts. Or yeah, he oh, has Intimidate. Did he have Intimidate or did he have guts? No, he has Rivalry. Oh, right. Um, but Ash trained Buizel to learn Ice Punch by going with Buizel, sending leaves his way so Buizel can punch the leaf, and if he's quick enough, it causes frost on it. At the same time, Ash and Buizel spend three days punching a waterfall until Buizel actually hits it so fast it phases through as if the water didn't stop. He taught Buizel ice punch. Ash learned what the, the uh, karate guy taught him, but Ash took all of that teaching and taught Buizel for a rematch and won because of Swift Swim, which is what you see. Great episode. Oh my god, I love that episode. Then he and him and Gliscor learn Giga Impact Gen and meet such a the gliding teacher who uses a scissor. This scissor can maneuver in air like no one's ever seen. It's like it still and has beats, its wings. And beats Ash constantly. Like Ash faces him, I think, three times in the episode. Maybe twice, but I'm I'm gonna go with three. And the guy actually said I will train Gliscor to control how to glide and control how to use Giga Impact. Leave him with me, and I will train him. Ash let him train him. Now Ash catches a gibble. Oh, boy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is the part of the show where I tell you, Ash has gibble. There is a potential Garchomp in the making. Unfortunately, Ash does not evolve it. I'm going to ruin that spoiler right now. But Gable knows Rock Smash, Dig. Um, I want. Uh, yeah, he does know Dragon Pulse. But when he uses Dragon Pulse, he's like, it, he looks like he just took a big dump. Like it <laughs> takes all of his energy. Um, Gible loves to eat Ash. Gotta get a Gible is the funniest episode of Pokemon ever. That is the funniest. The way the animation is, the way everyone's like, oh god, what is this thing, Gibble? Gibble likes to eat everything. Gibble also knows Draco Meteor because he uh, watches the lady who teaches Draco Meteor to an Altaria. Draco Meteor in this show is shooting a big orange ball that splits into millions of meteors that rain hell. It's basically a huge firework that rains meteors from the sky, but you have to shoot it straight up. Gibble's Draco Meteor is one ball that shoots up, farts, pops into one other ball that falls down, and always hits Piplup. Always. That's, there's an episode where Piplup gets lost, and the way they find him is Gibble using Draco Meteor. Now that's a 90s anime. And it took that him, is going it back took to him comedy. Ten, it took him over 10 No, not over 10 years. It took him about 10 years to get back to the roots. Yep. And... That was the funniest thing I've ever seen is Gibble. Gibble's best. Gibble's life. Dawn, now at this point, has a mammal swine Oof. that doesn't listen. A Togekiss, who actually protects Piplup. And was given to her by a princess that's actually Dawn's identical twin. And, Wait, gets, a, and gets a Cyndaquil. Okay. Now, Dawn's team is Piplup. Baneri, Pachirisu, Mamoswine, Togekiss, Quilava. Great contest, Pokemon. Wow. And some of you are like, what happened to Apom? There was a ping pong tournament. 
Apom wanted to go to the ping pong. Apom just kind of does whatever Apom wants. Apom left contests for ping pong? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's... It's because they wanted... You do uh, you, buddy. It, yeah, you Wait, do no you. Wait, no Ambipom? Ambipom, yep. He had an Ambi... She had Ambipom. Ambipom left for... Yeah, okay, can we just go back, though, to the fact that Ash caught this thing, traded it to her just for her to give away? <laughs> There's a reason Dawn's not my favorite. That's kind of a gift. I'm sure it's not her Ash. fault. It's I'm sure crazy. Ash has done the same fucking thing. Oh, no. How could he ever do that? Butterfree. Charizard. There we, there we go. There we Every go. Lapras. <laughs> Pidgeot. In 6th gen, Gudra. Yeah. So can you really blame her? Coming from who she traded it from, no. There but, you go. <laughs> um, uh. Ash teaches Gibble Draco Meteor and works hard with him to make sure that Draco Meteor works. And Ash successfully wins Draco Meteor. Oh, and there's a guy in there I want to mention named, um, oh my god, what is his name? Nando. Nando loves bug and grass type Pokemon and anything that sings. He couldn't decide what he, he wanted contests or gym battles and Ash and Dawn fought over what he should do. And the dude chose both. Attaboy, do both of the best worlds. And faces Ash. And the final, the match between those two led to... Oh, and this is the first time Ash ever looked at his team and said, you know, I kind of want to win this. Um, He went to the PC. Oh, shit. And took out Pokemon... That he has previously caught. Uh, is this the, the only first time? match? Oh, he pulls out Cyndaquil. The first episode in Old Family Blend. Cyndaquil evolves. Ladies and gentlemen, Ash has a Quay Lava. Did, 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 has he used the PC since? Like, has he even referenced the PC since he got Krabby? E yes. Like five times, maybe? Not even once or twice. Mm, I think once or twice just on switching out uh, fan feet here and there. So he Otherwise, goes just for Cyndaquil, not for like any. Oh, no, he does. No, it's Cyndaquil, Heracross, oh, everyone. Oh, oh, Everyone's fuck. on board. He releases everyone or he summons everyone in an old family blend. Like he literally tells Oak, send the first wave of Pokemon that are from Gen 1, release, or pops them all out, says hi to everyone, pops them back in, pops out Gen 2. We see Gen 2, and this is where he evolves into Cyndaquil, but P Professor Oak kind of fucks up the odor, so you kind of see them sporadically. But Ash says hello to everyone. How Ash, is this in my heart? Everyone's, Ash's team is one Tauros out of 30 that he likes to use. Muck, Kingler, Snorlax, Heracross, a shiny Knocked Owl, Totodile, Bayleaf, Bulbasaur, Torkoal, Glalie. Wait, Glalie, was it shiny or was it? It was shiny. Okay, it wasn't Pinkan. Nope, Ash has a shiny. Um, has Glalie, Courtfish, Swellow, Dawnfan, Sceptile, and now Equilava, plus Gibble, Buizel, Staraptor, Infernape, and Torterra. Holy fucking roster. Anything from Gen 3? I, I just said he has... um. Sceptile, uh, Swellow, Torkoal, Corfish, okay. and Glalie. I, I blanked out because the list was that massive. Oh, yeah, no. Ash's actual thing now, if you Wait, were so to go to... he's actually going to gonna fight with, like, 20 Pokemon? Was this green version? This was... In Gen 4, Ash was using no, everyone. I, it, it's a reference to green version when the plan was for people to have, like, 70 Pokemon on their team or something stupid. Oh, right. Have um, you ever seen that, that picture of, like, fucking Pokeballs going off the screen? Yes, I have with Professor Oak. You have to face all 150. <laughs> um, fuck him. Uh, um, Ash beats Nando in a Heracross, Cricketoon, Fury Attack, Slash, Horn, Mega Horn, and Fury Cutter battle. Like, it's a swordsman battle. It's straight up the last samurai battle. Uh -huh. 
I know it. Amazing. The next battle is Conway. Conway uses Heracross, Slowking, Agron. This is his team that he actually has. Whoa. In the battle versus Ash, he uses Shuckle, Licky Licky, uh. and Dust Noir. Wait, what was the last one? Dusk Noir. Oh, I thought you said Gardevoir. I was picking my ear. I, was, I got excited for a second. No, it's Dust Noir. And ironically, he actually caught him, and no one actually knew he caught him. And Gibble tried to eat Shuckle. Yeah, this I feel is like where Shuckle that would go. Around. This is how Shuckle turned around, and you sludge bomb in Gibble's fully open mouth right down his throat. He is shoving sludge down his throat. Ooh. Gibble... Oh, and Conway is a strategic mastermind. Shuckle, go Shuckle. And everyone's like, Shuckle? Gibble actually won that battle, and Ash almost lost right there. Because Ash sent out a Noctowl. And then I believe Ash... Oh, what else did he use? Um... I believe he used either Quelava or Donphan. It was definitely one of those two. How did he beat the Shuckle? Um, with Shuckle in his mouth, he used Draco Meteor. <laughs> he turned Shuckle into a Draco Meteor and launched him. Did he die? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's what my th first thought was. Here's why I give Conway props. Go Shuckle. Why are you using Shuckle? Use Power trick. Rip. Oh, you motherfucker. Use Gyro Ball. <laughs> and the only way that Ash could stop Gyro Ball is for him eating it. Licky Licky. Um, uh, only Licky Pokemon. Licky, I think, lost to Noctowl. Licky Licky is the only Pokemon that, through level up moves only, can get a stab explosion. Therefore, one of the strongest vanilla moves in the game. Right. But Licky Licky likes to use Lick and Power Whip and then Thunderbolt. <laughs> because why not? Because, yeah, why not? And then uh, I think Ash's um, no knocked out beat it to extra sensory. Um, then Conway sends out Dust Noir. Dust Noir uses Trick Room, making a slow Pokemon ridiculously fast and starts annihilating. Yeah, it, it is Dawn Fan. Annihilating Knocked Owl and Dawn Fan. By using Shadow Punch and Such Thunder Punch. Shit move. So we have. Oh, and here's the best part. Ash saw Thunder Punch and was like, "Shit, I gotta get knocked all out of there." Yeah. Trick rooms up. Conway actually told Dust Noir to use Mean Look. He locked his Pokemon. Now, if no one has seen in this podcast so far, we have seen multiple times people using strategy. Something we really rarely see in Pokemon up until this point. You see it every now and then, but nothing. Like an entire season of it. An entire generation of just and this, strategy. And this, this goes to what you were saying on one of our first Skype calls, is that it inspired you with this perspective on how Pokemon moves are not just attacks. They're, it's a whole philosophy that you can do anything with it and you if you know, pokemon go is anything what it should it, be it's not, it's, it's not gonna be anything it's gonna no be it's shit. it's gonna be garbage um although i am gonna lose my life to it because i'm just gonna pack my bags and leave town no, um no, you're not i'm just gonna catch everything man uh, um if pokemon didn't have the turn base and they didn't have the actual stats you take the stats out and shit worked like they did in the anime you would think of Pokemon in an entirely different sense. I mean, sense. what was your whole thing about being on a cliff and something comes back to you? Being on a cliff and something comes back to me. Yeah. Oh, I think I was... Um, I think I had a dream where I fought Red and it was like my team versus him. No, and no, no. One of your Pokemon came back to you. Think of all the Pokemon you've like lost or whatever in, in RP dreams. Oh, oh, yeah, um, Myth. Myth. Myth, my f my shiny Flygon. All right, guys. No, Side no, 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 no. That's a sad story. That's a sad story thing. 
We'll leave that for the sad stories. I will possibly be more on this channel or the other channel that Pat has. You want to join the network? <laughs> I probably would be going to join the network, All but right. I'm, I will do sad stories. There's a great story behind a shiny flag on that people must hear. But anyways, Dust Noir loses to Gibble because he used Shadow Punch, and Gibble ate it. Um, then She's Gibble decides to tilt Dust Noir up and Draco Meteor him. Turning a Dust Noir into a Draco Meteor. Now, at this point, Ash has beaten two people. We're done with the semi. We're to the semifinals. Wait, wait, that was all in the tournament. Yep, I thought this, this was this all is... during training. Nope, this is the league. Right. Okay. My bad. Here's something though. Ash meets uh, Barry. Barry, if no one knows, is you know that annoying rival in Gen Four Diamond Pearl Platinum that's like, hey, hey, yeah! the guy who looks like he's on speed and he runs and straight in into house. you, and he has a dad who. I'm gonna find you a million dollars. Yeah, super annoying. He's actually in the show. This is like the first time they've actually introduced almost everyone from the game to the show. Well, I mean, Barry, you had Brendan and May, but not Wally. Wait, Brendan was well, no, Brendan was anime only, right? Or game only, yeah. No, and Brendan, not Brendan. Fucking, what, what the fuck was his name? Ben. I think I don't remember, but what, I, he what wasn't. What the fuck was May's little brother's name? Oh, Max. Max. What the fuck? But Max. Kind of name Max is that? wasn't. Max wasn't uh, Brendan at all. They didn't. The uh, no, male... no. I, I just forgot his name. I just no. Oh I mean, yeah. He's supposed to be the little brother that's in the house, but it's like. Eh. Oh yeah, but um. Barry's yeah, Pokemon. Max. Now, Barry's a jackass. Yep. But Barry actually has good Pokemon. Barry has Skarmory, Hitmonlee, Heracross, Rose Raid, Staraptor, and an Empoleon that he absolutely cannot live without. And Barry's not a great trainer, but he somehow manages. Because he's and, got it in his blood. His dad's a fucking battle frontier. Yeah, he his dad's ridiculous. But his hit only like knows Blaze Kick. His Skarmory he uses as entry hazards. Like he does use Skarmory the way you're supposed to use Skarmory. <laughs> he uses Rose Raid the way he's supposed to. Not necessarily Heracross. Star Raptor, he doesn't know Brave Bird. Empoleon is his that? ace in the hole. I think he might know close combat. There but you go. That's all you need to know. There is an episode where it's called Casting a Paul on oh. Barry. Paul goes up against Barry. What an ass smackdown. Three on three. Hitmonlee, Skarmory, and Polion. Paul uses Magmortar, Electrovire, and Ursaring. He sends out Toxic Spikes. Or Spikes. Paul switches out his Pokemon because Barry's like, haha, he won't switch out his Pokemon. There's entry hazards. And Paul does exactly that. He's like, I don't give a fuck if they get hurt and sends them out anyway. Jesus and Christ. He, he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he, they take damage and they're like, I don't give a damn. And then Meg Mortar annihilates Skarmory. Him only hits him with Blaze Kick because he's like, ha, I'm going to kill you and get a burn. Because he has close combat, Mega Kick, and Blaze Kick. Blaze Kick led to Ursaring's guts because he got a burn. And then Ursaring annihilated him only with a hammer arm. Empoleon was beat to a pulp by Electrovire. And actually turned into Torrent and used his most powerful move, Hydro Cannon. This is also the first time we've ever seen Blast Burn... Frenzy Plant yeah, yeah. and High Cannon. And Paul annihilates him by zapping the living hell out of him to a point where they actually don't show Empoleon going down. You just see him standing there with blank eyes and him just smoking. Paul spanked Barry. Now, the what, next battle. What are, like, how fucked of parents did he have to have? I don't think he had parents. I think he was raised by his brother. Jesus Christ. I guess, now, I guess Barry symbolizes Gen 1ers and other people who are like, fucking contests are for pussies. I guess that's what he symbolizes. Pretty much. People are just close-minded about battling. Now, the 
Paul versus Ash. Familiar breed breed strategy is what it is. Infernape learns Blaze or er, uh, Flare Blitz right before this. Mm-hmm. Paul, this is a three episode battle. Oh, DBZ up in the shit. Paul has beaten Ash every single time. Wait, except for. Nope, they draw. All right, got it. That's it. It's a draw, and then it's a loss every single time. This is how the match starts out. Go Pikachu. Go Agron. Oh. And break, Pikachu, break there, buddy. He, well, he's like this. He's like Pikachu. Use Volt Tackle. Agron. Use Metal Sound. Paralyzes and locks Pikachu. He can't handle it. That's okay. Switches out. Sends out Infernape. Infernape mock punches and flare blitzes Agron. Actually, they flare blitz and double edge, and Agron doesn't take anything because of a rockhead. Rockhead, yeah. And Infernape does. Infernape uh, gets beat. Oh. Yeah. Um. Now, the next Pokemon he sends out is Gastrodon. He switches out because he's like, okay, clearly, clearly Infernape's going to lose. But Gastrodon's slow and on the ground. Star Raptor. Star Raptor actually went after him pretty well with a Brave Bird. Paul uses Gastrodon to jump, body slam, and lock Star Raptor down. Shoots a water pulse straight in the air. So that it comes back down with velocity. Basically turning it into a meteor. So it gains more momentum on the way down. And was going to move off at the last minute. Ash says, use close combat on the ground to get out of there. Genius. So basically flailing like a maniac. Yep. <laughs> that's that's now, close Ash, combat for you. Now Ash and him at this point are battling. It is no longer a smackdown. It is no longer a fist fight. It is a battle. And Paul gets mad at him because Ash actually uses the same team he lost with. And Paul changed his team. Ash says, okay, Star Raptor is not winning this. Switches out, sends out Buizel. Buizel uses uh, Sonic Boom. And Paul uses Muddy Water. As a counter shield that he learned from Ash. Hey -o. That Ash learned from Dawn. Now, this has come full circle. Eventually, he runs in to try to Aqua Jet him, and he tries the body slam thing. Tells him to switch out of Aqua Jet and go to Ice Punch. Punches Gastrodon, knocks him out. Now, Paul sends out Drapion. This Ooh. thing is made of hell. This thing sends out toxic spikes, knocks out Weasel, knocks out Star Raptor, and evens the playing field. And at this point, every Pokemon is poisoned. I'm not going to tell you guys the whole battle on how Drapion got this far because I do want you guys to watch at least this triple battle or this three episode battle. If you like this battle, watch everything that led up to it because it's all worthwhile. Everything's great. There's even an episode where there's an evil Togepi. Enough said. Um, and Togepi gets told to go to the corner by Rayquaza. There you go. Drapion literally takes out almost Ash's team at this point and beats uh, Torterra. It poisoned five of Ash's Pokemon. And knocked out majority of Ash's Pokemon, evening the playing field. Until I believe it was either no, it was um, it was Gliscor who beat him, because Gliscor learned how to use Giga Impact, because Gliscor came back and mastered Giga Impact. And by master Giga Impact, I mean he uses Giga Impact, bounces with his tail after he's done spirals backwards into the air way high up that nothing can reach him to recharge in the air. And glide. 
and glide. Uh, now, that is amazing strategy. Now there they are beat no Drap- rules. Now they beat Drapion, and now Ash has to deal with Ninjask, who's using the speed boost. The way Ash gets rid of Ninjask and the poisoning problem is he sends Infernape underground, uses Flare Blitz underground, and burns the poison out of the stadium and smacked Ninjask out, causing him to lose all the speed he lost, which in then turn, Ash beat him. Now he sends out Frostlass. Now, ooh. He sends out Frostlass, uses Hail, he has Snow Cloak. Have you guys noticed anything that everyone has used the abilities that these Pokemon finally have? It's almost like they should have done that in Gen 3, but Gen 3 was a buffer generation. <laughs> I know, Gen 3 buffed for Gen 2 for the Steel type, and now but Gen 4 was like, hey, you also introduced abilities in Gen 3, let's really focus on that. Ash's Pikachu beats Frostlass. Now's where shit hits the fan. Infernape has helped out majority of this team. Now, remember everyone, Infernape was Paul's Pokemon. And has a problem controlling Blaze. And especially when he evolves, there's multiple incidents where he evolves and he loses control and he actually becomes dangerous and almost kills Ash multiple occasions. The final Pokemon Paul sends out is Electrovire. Oh, Oh, shit. Now... Electrovire beats um Pikachu. Electrovire beats Gliscor by sending mm. his tails into the ground and thundering the ground to cause an electric stone edge towards Gliscor. Which sends Gliscor down and then knocks out Gliscor. But Gliscor's also had a lot of damage from other Pokemon. Electrovire so is, is a fully And so is Infernape. Infernape has been poisoned. So is Pikachu. Beat up, Every, all this everyone's shit. poisoned. Everyone's beat up. Electrovire's full health. Pikachu goes after Electrovire. In the first episode, Pikachu and Elekid had a standstill with Iron Tail, and I think either Brick Break, no, it was Thunder Punch. He used Thunder Punch and he used Steel Tail, Iron Tail, or Iron Tail, and it blocks each other. Paul goes, "You haven't changed a bit," and goes, "Let's really see how you deal with this. Use Brick Break." And he's like, oh shit, Pikachu's locked in the air. Electrovire has another hand. And Brick Breaks Pikachu. And Pikachu actually sends Electrovire a thunder. Because Ash is still Ash. He's still Ash. Kid's still learning. But More electricity Electrovire... always works. Well, yeah, because why not? Because it killed Nonix. Yep. Yeah, right? And Electrovire gets motor drive. Oh. And Ash wants to use that to an advantage to make him cocky. Oh. But it backfired oh. and beat Pikachu. Last Pokemon is Infernape. Electrovire and Infernape go at it with Thunder Punch and Brick Break and Mock Punch and Flare Blitz and Thunder and Flamethrower. And eventually Electrovire catches him with his tail and thunders him to the point where Infernape, a Pokemon who is literally on fire, is now smoking from being electrocuted too much. Flashback to uh, drops Holia. him. Literally, yeah. And he drops him. Infernape goes down, is unconscious, and the refs are about to call it because they're like, "Is is he alive?" <laughs> and Paul is about to win this. The ref's about to call it, and Electrovire actually yelled out his cry, stopping the ref, and Infernape gets a little bit of consciousness and sees Paul say, I'm glad I got rid of you. You're proving just like before that you were worthless then, and you are worthless now, and that's why you lost. And Infernape, and Ash says, we're not done yet. Infernape gets up, goes Super Saiyan 3, controls his blaze and i mean super saiyan 3 his fire hair is redonkulous in this goes super saiyan 3 ash yells out flamethrower that but was what not he gets a is a that was an ion cannon coming out of a monkey <laughs> that was not flamethrower it didn't have a flame it was a straight red beam and a huge one at that a 
sends Electrifier flying. Electrifier gets up and he's like, uh, well, that that's a little unexpected. He tells him to use Mach Punch. Infernape sends him flying again by teleporting. Wait, Infernape what? at this point has become so fast that he actually can't be traced by the eye. That finally ends with them using, I think, Thunder Punch and Thunder and a Flare Blitz. The entire stadium turns into a tornado of electricity and fire and eventually has Infernape phase through Electrovire. Oh! Oh! And Electrovire goes down. And Paul just sits there and goes, Holy shit. I just lost to the Pokemon I bullied. It's one of the most amazing battles I could have ever expect Pokemon to ever produce. And they've never the tried to top it. Gen 4 is bullshit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Get ready. So tell them about how this guy fought his last opponent. Oh my god. Okay, so, so before don't talk this, about Ash's fight, yeah. Before this, there's a rumor that there's a guy out there who is beating people left and right. With one Pokemon. With one Pokemon. One. He's beat the entire Pokemon League. We are talking every battle and every gym leader with one Pokemon. This Pokemon is Darkrai. Darkrai. You're bringing a legendary into this. That's not fair. Just one legendary? And nobody knows this I was even has the rest of a team. I was expecting, and this is actually, if you actually look back and actually do the math on Wait, this. Who did he beat? Who, beat, beat who was the guy that they showed beating before? It was a character, right, that people knew? It was, no, this dude is totally introduced. No, no, I mean, I mean, r- before he fights Ash, he fights someone else. And that's when we see his Darkrai, right? Um, Barry mentions him. And that's how you kind of introduces him. So when he and fights, so when he fights Ash, that's the first. He's time? kind of just in the shadows right, right. now. Yeah, no yeah. one really knows about him. Okay. They just know that he's beating people with Darkrai. Ash faces him. Ash's team at this point is Septile. Um, Wait, this is not the finals. This is the semifinals, right? Yep, this is the semifinals. And who are in the other brackets? Who are the other two people? Actually, no one knows. Not it's, at all. it's just two other people, and Ash faces Darkrai with a Heracross, who Ash taught Sleep Talk to. Props, Ash. Like, you should have won this. Septile. Literally, oh my, like, Ash brings out the best team with, like, Swello and... Pikachu. I think Torkoal and Donphan and Pikachu and Sceptile and Heracross beats Darkrai. Ash actually beat Darkrai with Nobody Sceptile. in the entire region was able to do this. Ash is the first to beat Darkrai. Can I, can I say what comes next? May I have the honors? Let me set you up for that honor. All right, all right. It should have ended with him going, you know what, that's all I got. You know what, thank, wow, I'm impressed. You beat a legendary, congrats, kid. You win the tournament. Pat, tell them what they send out. Except for the fact that I have a Latios. Why? And Where do I'll... you get these things? If you go mm-hmm. to Cerebi, his two red, his two actual Pokemon are Darkrai and Latios. And f- probably four other legendaries. Yeah, he has a team of six. It is confirmed that he does have the team of six. And so... To- it's a good chance they're legendaries. Yeah, so what hap- What ends up happening is that... Uh, he beats Sceptile, takes out Swellow, and then a double knockout with Pikachu and Latios. Ash took out two of his Pokemon. And then the way the tournament ends is Tobias... Um, Tobias beats this other kid that's just out of nowhere... With just Darkrai. If he had just had Darkrai and that was it. Oh, uh, shit. I don't know if you can hear the sirens around me, but. Yep. 
Yeah. So wait, I thought that the, I, I, I thought got that bad when you told me, I thought the story was that he beats a kid, he beats Ash, then he loses to a kid. No, no, he beats the kid. All he right. beats the kid with just he, Darkrai. He wins, but, he wins the tournament. But if Ash would have beaten Darkrai and that's all he would have had, the Ash fact that this kid before. couldn't beat his Darkrai tells me that Ash could have beaten that kid. Definitely. And it could have just ended with, hey, there's a, there's a fifth gen. And then fifth and, generation could have been a completely different cast. Yeah, that's where they could have ended it and moved on. But Here's Ash's fifth gen. Ash's fifth gen is a oh. sand dial that goes everywhere with him until it's a crocorark, and then finally Ash catches it as a crocorark and evolves to a crocodile. The episode after he catches crocorark catches a rag and rolla. We're talking double episode capture. Gets a bulldor. Catches a Palpitoad, gets a, uh, um, oh god, Swaddle and whatever Swadloon is, and Lee Vanny. Hatches a Scraggy, gets an, a girl unfenzant, has Snivy, has a Pig Knight, has Oshawa. Can you see that nothing has really evolved from this point? It, it's not even worth it. And he doesn't get far at all in this one. There's no rival. There's no, there's no even, like, build-up. It's the, best wishes. That's, that's my best wish is that Ash were to go away. Um, well, here's I'm I'm gonna take the reins for a bit. You can you can calm yourself down over there. That, yeah. I'm gonna... So we said that Ash lost the first generation because, well, I mean he should have because he was ten. He had no idea what he was doing. But also yep. because it shows these kids, all the kids watching, it's okay to lose. And in generation, and then you know. It's it's okay to lose. Sometimes you'll win. Like in the Orange Islands. He wins just a mean little thing. He's like, okay, that's nice. Shows kids that he's not a loser. You know, you should still have faith in this main character. Then Generation 2 comes by. He's like, yeah, it's okay to lose. Generation 3 is like, okay, except that he's never going to win. Generation 4 is like, <gasps> he's so close. But then that, you know when something gets used so much that it loses its value? Then when yeah, I gave something up, descends from heaven and says... It's I gave okay up to lose. That. You turn up and say, "No, it's okay to lose when you're when you." It's okay to lose, and when I've learned enough, it's time to that I win for once. Some it, the thing is, is that there's a thing that we feel where we say something deserved to it happen, and it was simply marketing, and that was that like that dark ride was the embodiment of just. Uh, the Bullshit. Deus Ex Machina of Ash, you cannot win. And that's I'm so every glad you listed fan, it as that. And a, 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 every single fan realizes at this moment that this is the director of the sh not the director of the show, but the owner of the show coming down, talking to you through this character, saying, kids, your hero Ash will never win a tournament. He will never win ever become Pokemon League champion. He's always going to be doing the show. You will always watch him fail every time. He will never win. You have no role model. Pretty much. Actually, I have his listings up. Um, in Kanto, he was listed in the top 16, which ain't shit. In Johto, he was listed as the top 8, which is a, Good. whatever. It's not even semifinal. I actually thought he did better than this, but apparently I'm wrong. In Hoenn, he's actually top eight as well. In uh, fourth gen, he's top four. Can you see why we were excited? Generation five. Two battles. Generation five is top eight. And Generation 6, I don't think it's done yet, so... No, um... Ash actually lost to a guy who said, Yeah, this will be an awesome 5-on-5! Five five. Um, it's a 6-on-6. Six six. What? You didn't bring a, a 6 Pokemon? I didn't think I... I didn't realize I had to do that. He forgot to bring a 6 Pokemon and still beat Ash. See, I'm trying to think of something. There's... There's been a point in some liter is something in the in in some story we all know or something, 
where someone has come down and said, like, you can never blank. This is blank. This is not blank. You can never blank. You know, Ash is not allowed to win, and he will never win. And ever the Deus Ex Machina, yeah. that is the owner of the show, coming down saying everything that you've learned, like. The whole generation was about building up to everything you've learned and all this stuff. And here's the real thing. I, and this is what we said the first time we talked about this. And I'm so glad I have not said this the entire time. But here is the line. They accidentally made him too good. They made him too powerful. And the only way they could stop him was by cheating. And when you say that you get frustrated that they had to cheat to cheat him out of his victory... And then Ash is just this hollow shell from then on. You have to realize that Ash did win. Ash did win the Pokemon League tournament in Generation 4. You want to know why? Because they had to cheat. And if someone has to cheat, if the god of that world, essentially, the creator of the, sh the owner of the show, made, them, made Ash too powerful that he had to cheat him out of his victory... Even the moment that Latios entered the tournament, Ash won. Right? Because if we say I that, consider he beat him. Not even that, but just like the fact that they had to cheat. Even if Ash got top 16, let's say, the fact that they had to install a character into that tournament who had cheats enabled means that Ash won. Once you force someone's hand, you've won. It doesn't matter what happens, but... It's just like in a court case, if any evidence brought to the court case is found through unlawful means, the entire court case is thrown out. I will say this, too, because uh, we, we did go past the mark that you wanted to. Um, yep. But I will wrap it up with saying that on Gen 6, I am keeping my eye out for Ash because... The moment, the reason I'm keeping my eye out for Ash is because we have brand new characters named Serena, who actually has a love interest with Ash from another from Gen One. Apparently, this is before Ash was even ten. There's well, actually I mean, a Ash love doesn't age. So, oh, well, I mean, yeah, he's eleven, but it's like all that hasn't happened in one year because technically. But there, there is a love interest, and that that intrigues yeah. me in some way because they haven't really pushed on that. And um, um, I mean, it's 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 France. Oh, yeah, they also have but. Straight and and she does them. change her style. She cuts her hair and everything. It, there's yeah, a lot no, of the, the the style change is what gives me hope because like Serena in the manga. Okay, let let's touch into the manga here for a second and how you know Generation Six manga is probably good, but it's been cancerous since Gen Five. Serena is like you can't like her in the manga from what I've observed because you know it's like how you couldn't like the people from Gen Four at the beginning because. They were so privileged and just – you fucking hated them. Now imagine yeah. if those kids were 17. You'd fucking hate them. And in the show, she's this blonde, just like barbie doll. Yeah, and she's then, the stereotypical. But then, then she cuts her hair and gets a different outfit. And because like think of this. like It's probably at the same point in the game where you get access to the Lumio City Buku. Or not Buku. What the fuck is a – a book who means good. to the the boutique, the boutique. And you you get to because what did we all do when we got access to the boutique and had enough money? We completely I I redesigned it. ourselves. I, uh, oh, I, the the actual uh, the the clothes. Oh yeah, I was in about Talos, to say once you hit I, was, a point, I thought you meant you like, the like cafes and the no, no, the, no, 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 no. the sushi chef cooking the thing. I was like, I avoided twenty thousand dollar flannel shirt. Oh, dude, shit. I am fully. In a tux of fedora and nice. black, I went ham on that. Yeah, I am, and we get like, haircuts nicest. too. Yep, and we get we keep doing the haircuts until we can get the advanced haircuts. But like, this is the point of the game where you completely redesign your outlook on the rest of the run. Because remember, the game drops off fast. The game just is empty after you beat Lysander. So what do you do? You redesign yourself and you try to make the best out of it. Serena is hitting this change at the exact same point we do. So she could, we have no idea what she's going to do because she could be a, the best character ever now because she's had a complete design change. I will say this with the anime. 
I am keeping my eye open, but I'm not, again, I'm not investing in watching it until I know Ash. I'm basically doing future spoilers before I watch the series. Like, I click on it, and I'll every now and then come back to it to see, like, has he won yet? And if they say he's won, I'll go back and watch it. I really will. I I will spoil myself till I can watch it, because I haven't watched the build-up to the entire thing. I just want to know. It's the same with me and the manga. I could never go back... I, I, you know, after I started Ring Generation 5, and I kind of abandoned it, because, I mean, the, what I was, like, um, I abandoned Generation 5, and then I saw stuff about Generation 6, I mean, I saw the crucifixes of Generation 5, I saw the fucking mind control of Generation 6, and I was just, I was just completely turned off, but then I saw stuff of Oras, and it's actually Ruby and Sapphire. And they actually continued their story. And there's yep. pictures of Ruby hugging a Dancy. And there's Zinnia in it. I want to read it so bad, but it's part of the Gen 6 storyline. It has Gen 6 characters in there, so it's like... And also, how can Zinnia exist in his universe if... Well, I mean, there is that thing at the end which kind of could mean that. But, like, I, I could never come back. It would need something so big to pull me back. And it, that, that's it would. basically you with the, the anime reason- me with the manga. The reason I'm like they, definitely they keeping my out. eye out. The reason I'm keeping my eye out is because Ash is only doing one starter, and for the most part, Ash has a powerful team. However, it's all about how he's using it. This is my red flag. Ash also caught a Gumi, evolved it into Sluggu, got a Gudra very quickly, and gave it up. But. A bomb was also given up. No, but I mean, like, we're not talking to another trainer. We're talking to he found a rainforest, found a bunch of goomies that were like, "We're alone. Or we're scared because everything oh. bullies us." Gudra, I want you to protect this wetland. Okay. We're talking another Butterfree and Lapras and Pidgeot because he you just have to remember. And here's something: they, for, he, here's Generation they, Six is all about fan service to Generation 1. And so is Generation 5, to be honest. A lot of the evolution chains in Generation 5 and progression is a direct ripoff of Generation 1. I mean, like, you know, trade evolution, well, ghosts, and, and fighting types and shit like that. Um, I do have, we do have to wrap this up. Yeah, I do have to. But uh, I will say this. There is a reason why you're seeing parallels between Generation 1 and Generation 6. That's on purpose. Yep. This, this is something, though, that is terrifying me. Ash has another potential dragon type in this one. Every person on Ash's team at this point, he is to the 7th gym. He doesn't have a full team yet. Every Pokemon up until this point is weak to electric. Except for Pikachu. He has a Talonflame, weak to rock and electric. He has a Howlucha, weak to, again, you don't rock and electric. Think. He has a Noidbat, weak to... To electric, and then he has a Greninja. Well, Noibat can turn to electric. No, can turn to a Noivern, which is dragon type and neutral to electric. It, it'll be neutral, yeah, but it, it's still a dragon. I mean, like, it it will be a dragon, but it's a, it's the, the thing, thing with Noibat is that it's is that he already had dragon. a dragon. It's a the thing is dragon. he already had a dragon. Yeah, Noivern's like, barely dragon. Noivern is barely dragon, but his Greninja is the only reason I'm sticking with it because his Greninja is actually going to become an Ash Greninja. Like what the fuck? No, he already is Ash Greninja. Jesus Christ, was it? I don't know. He actually fuses. Basically, Ash sends his soul into Greninja, and Greninja and Ash do a Digimon thing where if Greninja gets cut, Ash gets cut. Their souls are linked. What the fuck? And now here's something else that's bugging the fuck out of me. Does he have a mega? There's been... there. He does not have a mega yet. He only has the mega Charizard from last show. Nope. Didn't... Oh, no, that was someone else. That was Red. That's that's all about the actual Red anime. No, I'll no, no, that. no. I, there was a thing with... Oh, no, it wasn't, oh, a, it wasn't a... No, it wasn't a mega Charizard. It was a Hydreigon. It was just a black dragon. I oh, I was about to say, there's a guy named Alan no, in the show. Not, yeah, that's different. Um, and do you think that he's going to get a Mega Ampharos then? Like, I don't. I would have no idea. But Alan is a sub-character that's been yeah, kind no, of... I, I remember, yeah. The, 
We can't. We they can't now, open up the can of worms of those past four movies. No, I'm no, the Mega Evolution series. We cannot open the, any of that. Up. They're in the anime now. I know. Ash, we, we can't no, open Ash, any of that up. Him. We we can't open that up. The big can of worms. Well, no, that's the reason I'm keeping an eye out is because Alan, this sub character who was actually possibly going to take over the show, has now met up with Ash. Okay, let's let's leave that as a cliffhanger. Yep, there's the cliffhanger. All right, well, thank you for having me on here. I'm glad I got to blow up on Gen 4 and why that's oh the best answer. That was good. Um, I suppose I should sign off and tell them where they can find me. They, you guys can find me at High Voltage X11. I do uh, Let's Plays, uh, various 100% uh, completion res Let's Plays. If I can know I can complete it, I'll do it. If there's a challenge and I know I can do it, I'll do it. Uh, I do 60-second plays. The best way to contact him, is, the best way to get to his channel is through links in the description or links on any of my channels. Uh, I'm going to induct him to be part of the network, so he is linked on all of my channels. You'll find him. Yep, and if you want Senpai to notice you, uh, just comment on my videos. I respond to those pretty quickly. Um, I do 60 second let's plays though, where it's a quick summary of a game or me just acting goofy in a game. I also do bad decks, which is an alcoholic drug so abusive good. Pokedex with a dork of a trainer who just do Pokedex entries in manners that shouldn't be a thing. But I will continue that. I, yeah, and then we have I also do shows unboxing. Down the, down the pipeline. We have a year to make up. Pretty much. And I've been working on it, but if I don't upload daily, Note this, I have a life too, and I'm not big enough to wear YouTube. You're gonna have a big life. I would not, I would start stockpiling videos to upload weekly. Yeah, start yeah. Start weekly and stockpile videos. Yeah, I'm thinking every weekend I'll do just an eight hour session of just videos, and then the next weekend I'll just edit them all. Oh, and yeah. funniest videos, if you guys just wanna go to see what the best shows oh, I have, it would be yeah. Spec Ops Season 2. Go watch all mm -hmm. the Spec Opses. They're the best the spec ops were like good like i used it in the montage for the anniversary video it was just like i love the editing that you do i mean this guy bleeps his shit he believes 40 minute Not videos the, the funny thing is is that well they're not they're not 40 minutes but they are 27 minute long videos you yeah edit but out every single swear what the yep and the funny thing is, is that I don't actually censor on all my other channel or all my other shows. It's just that one, and it's the one show that shouldn't be censored because it's the most graphic, which I makes it that the much more fun. Termination of fucking censoring all that stuff. Yep. Every time I said fuck, I go meh, and every time I say shit, it's a. Ah! There's a lot of editing that goes into that. All right. Okay, let's sign off. All right, well, thank you guys. Thank you for having me on. Yes, welcome to the TPT Network. Welcome to the TPT Network, and welcome everyone here who's watching to the TPT Network. Uh, here's to this uh, this spring, well, this winter, this spring, and this summer of a lot of wonderful cross promotion and collaboration on new material. Goodbye. Bye. Readers rock. <laughs>